Hello, and welcome to Mastering Houdini Muscles, a studio level workflow for visual effects. My name is Noah Schnapp, and I'll be your guide for this at Pitcher. Over the last 15 years, I've had the pleasure of working as a rigging artist, character effects artist, technical artist, and developer with some of the best companies in the business. I've grown from a junior artist to a lead artist and ultimately supervising entire rigging and character effects departments. I've been lucky enough to experience a wide variety of workflows and project timelines, such as feature film, feature animation, commercials, episodics, and video games. So let's suit up, dive in, hit the Houdini gym, and get our flex on. So let's talk about who this course is for. Because, you know, there's, there's a lot of different tutorial series out there catered to, you know, a wide um, variety of audiences. And so every time I make a series, I'd, I like to, you know, first search, uh, you know, the internet, the, you know, the marketplaces, see, see what um, tutorials are available for a topic that I want to discuss. And then, you know, if there's a lot of interest, I really start looking at how can I make this tutorial different from all the others? How can I give something that is beneficial for not only uh, large studios, but also individual artists. And so this, this series is really uh, catered to this, this wide variety. It, it will apply to whether you're a studio with lots of resources, meaning lots of financial resources, lots of artists on hand, or lots of computing resources. It will also apply to individual artists that maybe are just trying to uh, create a project on their own. So this is going to be a very robust and flexible and scalable workflow to where we can, um, you know, regardless of, of your computing power, regardless of how many artists you have on hand, you can uh, utilize this um, and it will be a great solution for uh, both, both types of teams. Okay, so what are we going to talk about in the uh, in the series. So we're going to look at how to actually create this muscle pipeline, this muscle workflow. We're going to look at how to optimize it, how to automate it, and how to scale it. Because, you know, there's so many muscle tutorials out there that only talk about one asset. And they, you know, they, they tell you how to do that one asset extremely well, you know, they go through the, the whole process. But at the end of that tutorial, it's like, you know how to do a bear really well, or you know how to do one person really, really well. And it, it, the, the truth of fact is, whether you, you know, you're an individual or whether you're a studio, muscle work takes an extremely large amount of time. Um, it, it, it is... It, you know, if you're an individual, you have to be almost a generalist because you have to somehow acquire the muscles and bones that like whether that's turbo squid, whether that's you sculpting them yourself, um, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, finding a model online. Um, and then you have to have the, uh, the technical uh, artistry uh, to, and, and knowledge just to create the system. And then you also have to have the time as an artist just to simulate it. And so there, there's a lot going on there. You know, if you're in a big studio, there's a lot of moving parts. And, you know, if you know how to do one asset really well, that's great for that one asset, but you really need a way to scale it. How to, how, you know, you need to be able to migrate your workflow and everything that you developed on that character to lots of other characters. Um, you need to be able to reuse it. So one of the big things in this series is we're going to talk about reusability and the the ease of migrating because um, the idea is that, you know, we, with that programmer mindset, you know, you never really want to script or code anything twice if you can help it. So for this situation with muscles, if we do you know, one body type, if like a biped, if we do a quadruped, we want to somehow be able to reuse that for all of that same body type. You know, we want to look at how we can reuse limbs across multiple, you know, different body types, if, if it's possible. We want to be able to reuse properties. We want to be able to reuse time space scale um, or space time scale, whatever you want to call it. So, you know, and that's basically like, you know, whether you're simulating like Godzilla or you're simulating like Hulk, 
um, you know, or like a very skinny person or skinny mouse, you know, you, you're going to have different frequencies based on the, the size and the mass um, related to the world scale. So we're, we're going to talk about all, all of that stuff. Um, so we're going to, uh, like I said, learn a pipeline that's efficient for large team studios as well as individual artists. We're also going to develop procedural workflows with generalized attributes to work for a variety of characters and setups. And so what that means is that um, I, I, I taught another uh, training series um, a couple years ago with Ziva Dynamics. And Ziva Dynamics is amazing. It, it's, you know, it... Um, it, it has been the best muscle solution for, you know, a number of years. And, you know, it was originally developed by Weta. It was, you know, acquired by Unity. Um, so it's, 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 it's a force to be reckoned with in the sense of muscles for, um, you know, the industry. Uh, one of the, one of the, of the challenges with it is that it you get extremely good results, but there's there's not really a pipeline or workflow around what you're simulating. You kind of have to provide that. You have to craft that for your studio. Um, in in that other training series, we look at how to script the whole thing, and it's like you know a thousand or fifteen hundred lines with like tools with IOs and stuff like that. And you know it it works, and you can you can set up something fairly automated. But some of the attributes are um, a little bit. A little bit sciencey, I'll put it that way. And you know, that's not a bad thing. That just means that anybody working with it has to understand what these mathematic principles are. So you're, we're dealing with things like Poisson's ratio, Young's modulus. You know, um, we're not just dealing with like stiffness and dampening. And so that's one of the benefits of looking at um, Houdini over Ziva is that it's it's catered to you know a, a wide audience that you know it's it's more applicable to artists that aren't so technical. Um, which is great for us because, you know, the more you're a generalist or like, let's say if you're more animator than rigor, um, this will, this will be easier to pick up. Um, so most importantly, we are going to create a workflow that really allows multiple artists to collaborate with each other and work on various parts of the muscle pipeline simultaneously. And uh, I mean, work on multiple parts of the same character simultaneously. And that's, that's amazing because, you know, if you have the resources of, of artists, you can really ramp up time and um, ramp up speed of, of the production. So uh, we're going we're gonna to look at how, you know, as an individual artist, you can utilize um, computing power, like, you know, have like almost a local um, top net farm, uh, sorry, a local uh, top net running on your machine. We're going to look at how you can use deadlines to set that up to farm it out to multiple sh machines. Um, but we're also going to look at how to split up the actual um, working on the asset or simulating the asset and how, you know, we can work with multiple people. Uh, so we, we can get more done um, in, in a shorter amount of time. Lastly, I want to clarify that there are essentially two flavors of using muscles in um, in the industry right now. There is shot and performance-based muscle, muscle simulation, and then there is pose and, uh, I guess you could say pose simulation-based. Shot simulation, the first one, is where you are usually simulating for uh, TV, film, um, something that's not an interactive experience like a video game. Uh, you have a start and an end to a shot. Something needs to already be happening at the beginning of that shot, like having pre-roll. Um, and then pose-based simulation is more so if you had like PSDs, when, when the character goes into a specific pose, you want um, this muscle flex to happen. So the majority of this tutorial will focus on the shot-based workflow. So uh, something that is um, catered a little bit more towards VFX. Uh, however, I'll say that um, everything in this process is applicable to the pose-based deformation. It, it leaves you in a s situation where you can completely um, use that for something like uh, generating the simulation for um, Unreal Machine Learning Devormer. Um, you know, you can... Uh, do something also more more so for like a shot based workflow where um you know you'd be doing something for film or tv as well so um 
they're they're two very similar workflows the the main difference is that the um, shop based workflow i think is a little bit more difficult because you have to account for all of the pre-roll um, automation and everything uh, you know the, the post based simulation is basically just a shot where you're starting from rest post anyway and um, that's that's fairly easy to do without uh, any of the special sauce that we'll learn in this training series. So, um, you know, the, the meat, the, the, the real gem of this training series is everything that it helps you set up for the shot based simulation workflow and automating that delegating it to a parallel evaluation um, through wedging or through uh, farm rendering. So um, let's dive into it.